Hello YouTubers, Jason and Lawrence here. I've been doing quite a lot of research online, thanks to all those that contribute their alcohol stove ideas to include soda pop or beer can, alcohol stoves, and uh, I do have an alcohol stove. My wife and I, in an effort to kick the fossil fuel habit, are trying to uh, remove gasoline from everywhere in our life and the ability to use alcohol in the backcountry is of significant benefit to us. The challenge we face though is in the winter being able to boil water and um, the uh, alcohol stove is relatively slow in doing that. Six to eight minutes is a typical boil time. So as is common with testing uh, these systems. We're looking here at about five minutes to boil just over and I don't know if you can see just over 500 milliliters in this titanium pot and it's we're just starting to get some fisheye bubbles. Um, anyone who owns a Whisperlite MSR uh, if you've ever tried to use alcohol and this is 91 percent uh, isopropyl, I'll get the bottle. If you've ever tried to use alcohol, your stove probably just hissed and sputtered. Um, here's the bottle. Simple Walgreens isopropyl 91%. And that was our first trial as a result of some of the stoves that we've seen. The coil stoves I figured there's got to be a way to get this system to run alcohol and I'm willing to accept the challenge. There's a couple of O-rings, uh, one in this valve and then another in this interface here that goes in the aluminum block into the, the pump body. Um, if the alcohol is going to impact those seals, we'll probably carry a couple in the back country. Uh, I'll show you the, now that it's starting to boil pretty good here, I'll show you the flame. And uh, that's a pretty nice whisper light blue flame. So folks that were doing the copper coil alcohol stoves, brilliant. And I figured the MSR is exactly that. It's a coil of pipe. Uh, and the, there's one gentleman who offered the specifications of the hole he drilled, and he said it was 0.8 millimeters. So I translated that to about a 32nd of an inch drill bit, or a number 68 was what our hardware store had. And started drilling out the jet by hand. Put the bit in between my fingers, he recommended using a pin pin clamp, I think he called it, or a pin vise. Um, if you're going to do a lot of these, I recommend it. I found eventually that I could put the, the K valve, because we never use the K valve. These stoves come with two valves. Uh, if I put the K valve in our drill uh, and clamp it and then just hold the bit in my finger, I could spin the jet and just gently feel how the bit was making progress through the valve and was able to drill out a K valve to about 0.8 millimeters or roughly one thirty second of an inch bit. Uh, if you try to do put the bit in your drill it simply won't fit. Um, and here we go now we've got a nice rolling boil again this is just over 500 milliliters and I did take it off so eight minutes is, is an unfair assessment and uh, if you're going to do a real strong comparison of stove and boiling time um, we're at a, just over 5,000 feet here in Colorado uh, I didn't put a cover on this I did pour it out of the tap and I would confidently say that it took about five minutes to get to the point where you could actually start cooking something or have water to uh, um, for purification purposes. Knowles recommends a fish eye eye boil is all you need to get it to because I think all you're after is about 160 degrees and the fish eyes show up well after 160 degrees. At altitude here water boils 
I think at a, just over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, this is a, an MSR Whisper Light uh, running 91% isopropyl alcohol that we bought at Walgreens. And I'm really excited about that. It sounds pretty good. I'll shut up for a moment and you can just listen to and, and watch it. It's not as loud as running white gas, but that flame dispersion is beautiful. This is exactly the kind of thing, if I turn it up a bit, um, you can see it start to peak out, and then I think at a point, I saturate that valve and it'll start spitting out um, liquid as opposed to vapor. You can hear it sputtering. So it's within the adjustment range of the MSR valve, and we may even discover that we can simmer with these things, which is, for those of you that own an MSR Whisper Light, being able to simmer would be something of a coup. Um, so if you have two jets in your stove, I, you know, I can see this being of great value for us. Uh, we use the standard jet for white gas. And then if we're able to find a bottle of Everclear or come across some moonshiners in the woods or something, we simply pop in our K jet. It's got a little K stamped on the side. If you own these stoves, you get two of them. One has a K designed for kerosene. And we took that, again, took that kerosene jet and drilled it out to 130 seconds. I don't know what it is before that, but uh, I've, I've heard that to run, to convert a car to run ethanol, for example, um, you need to trick the computer in some cases to for the mass airflow, but you also, in some cases, need to change the injectors, and it's so that you get more fuel flow, and I figured we'd apply the same principles here and start with some of the research that people were doing with their uh, homemade coil pipe alcohol stoves that are just super cool in my estimation and apply it to an existing technology. So that drill bit cost me about $1.68. Uh, so all told, it cost about a $2 to convert our MSR Whisper Light to run on isopropyl alcohol. And uh, I suppose next I might try 70%, see how that does, uh, basically rubbing alcohol again, and then uh, may try Everclear. And if I get that far along or feel that plucky, then I'll sure, certainly share the information with you all, but I owe it to the YouTube community as much time as I spend uh, borrowing information and, and stealing your all's ideas. Uh, I'm contributing my own here. So if you want to convert your MSR Whisper Light stove to run on alcohol, it's a pretty straightforward and simple process and uh, certainly one that I am excited about. So now our stove runs on booze. That's all I've got. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions, please share them in the comments section. Uh, we all benefit from the information that we share. And as most of us aren't getting paid to do this, the uh, greatest value is to each other and, and uh, in sharing these ideas. Signing off.